The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Wah here from Mr. Wah Media, and yes, that is my actual name. Today, I've got a new challenge. Two days to do an entire Death Guard Legion. Once again, my home province of British Columbia is back under quarantine, which means that Mia is back in the closet. You can't just keep locking me up every time there is a lockdown! I have rights as a Canadian citizen! You are in big trouble, mister! I'm sure she's fine. She's fine. But more importantly, it means I gotta do this by myself. And I'm using the low-resolution camera. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking I should have taken the camera off of her before I threw her in there. That's my bad, you guys. My bad. But enough about that! Let's talk about the project itself. Now this one was generously donated by Mass, who's Mia's brother. Now you might have recognized him. He was in the Fallout video helping behind the scenes. And he's going to be in an upcoming episode in January, February, shooting permitting. Uh, so keep your eyes out for that one as well. And he donated his entire Death Guard Legion for us to paint. Now, me being a masochist, I decided to give myself only two days to complete the entire thing. Let's get started. Alright, to begin with, we're going to use some black acrylic paint and use that as our primer across all of the pieces. Now, throughout the video, you're going to notice I'm jumping from one model to another. Um, as I said earlier, this is the low resolution camera. Not all the footage was as good as I would like it to be, but this paint scheme is used across the entire army. We're talking over 100 plus pieces, but the steps are identical, so you can follow along regardless. Once you give an ample time for your black to dry, we're going to go in with some burnt umber, some generic brown, and just dry brush that across all of the surfaces. Don't be afraid to show some of the black underneath it, that's just going to give us some natural shadowing, but you do want to cover the majority, I'd say probably 90% of the surfaces. Next up, we're going to take two parts brown and one part white to make this lighter color and dry brush it across most of the surfaces. Uh, you probably don't want to get it on the metallic areas or the ooze, but if you do, no worries, we'll get that in the detail step. And you'll keep going until you get something that looks a little bit like this. And with those three steps out of the way, we're now finished the main part of our body. Like I said, this is a speed painting challenge and we have a lot of models to get through. Now, this might seem simple on the surface, but it really does have a nice striking look. And now we're going to go in there with some washes, in my case Agrax Earthshade, to get in all the nooks and crannies. If you don't have this on hand, you can use some black and brown washes, but for me, I just like the consistency. And that's making this guy look really disgusting. It's now time to move on to the detail work. First up, we're going to start working with some blacks. Anytime there's a spell effect or a flame effect, I'm going to start with a gloss black. Anywhere there might be some cloths, such as you know loincloths or capes or uh, gun holsters, will be a matte black. And any metallic surfaces get a light dry brushing of gunmetal. With that out of the way, we're going to work on something a little bit more bold and striking. I'm going to use this bright neon green color to really show the difference between the grimy shells and the armor plating, and then the brightness of the lenses and the ooze and certain weapon effects, uh, such as the plasma coils on some of the infantry guys. Some of the weapons will get a little bit of a, a green tinge to them. It's just a really nice contrast between, as I mentioned, the griminess and this out-of-nowhere bright neon color. I really like this look. And it's more noticeable on the big guys, but because I want a consistent look across the entire army, everyone is going to get this, even if it's just a small, minimal effort. For this infantryman, for example, his eye lenses have been colored in, and the large tube that runs from his mask to his backpack will also be done in this neon green. Nothing too crazy, but it adds that uniform look for everyone. And that even includes the lower level infantry, such as the Poxwalker Zombies. These guys, even though they don't have the same armor or look, and most of them don't even have clothing, a loincloth at best, they still have the same colors as their larger brethren, and these tiny green sores and boils and ooze just tie the entire thing together. You can tell that they belong in the same army.
With the vast majority of the army now out of the way, I can work on some of the more special units, such as Champions, the Sorcerer, and of course the Lord Contagion here, the Warlord of my Warband. Uh, for this guy, I really wanted to make him pop out a little bit more, so I'm going to work on the fire effects, um, but I really wanted to do something special with his cloak. Uh, is It pretty much just matches his grubby looking armor, which would make sense, he's a disgusting Lord of Contagion. But I wanted to add just a little bit more, so I'm doing a thin green line along the edge just to really give it a nice contrast and really make the whole thing pop out. On top of that, I'm going to work on some of the cables. He's got a little bit of ooze dripping out of his gut like this. You can sort of see the effect I went for. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. And once I was totally satisfied with my cloak, I decided to jump onto the flame effects. For this one, we're just going to take our brush and lightly paint over all the raised parts of the flame. Now, this is a relatively straightforward paint job since it's got the gloss black underneath and now we have the green on top. It's a two-tone flame that's relatively simple. If I was to use this on a different model that wasn't Nurgle-esque, you know, the greens and nausea, I would probably use more reds, orange, and yellows, but because this one is a relatively straightforward and because we're pressed for time, I'm completely satisfied with this two-tone fire. And I'll use the exact same technique on the Sorcerer. All of the uh, pipes and uh, ooze will have the green effect. Uh, the spell is going to get a light dry brushing here because his is a little bit more chunky. It's not as detailed as the fire was, so I'm not as concerned. I suppose I could add a little bit of white to the tips, but again, time is of the essence. And this already has a nice enough contrast for my liking. Once I finish off these little... Uh, totems and, and ruins that he has on him, I'm pretty satisfied with my sorcerer as well. With the end in sight, it's now time to work on the base of the model. For this one, I wanted something quick and easy that I could throw on over 100 models in a very short amount of time. So we're going with Agrolin Earth from Citadel, which is a nice texture paint. You slap it on there in a big glob of mud and eventually it'll harden to make a cracked earth effect. I really like this one and I used it on the Necrons, if you saw the other speed painting challenge, and had a great amount of success with it. So this is what it's going to look like while it's still wet. You can see it's kind of smeared on there like some peanut butter. And this is what it looks like when it's hardened. So the more you clump it in there, the thicker you make those big blobs, the more crack effects you're going to have. And the final step, we're going to take some gloss black and we're going to clean up the outer edge of the base. Uh, this is relatively straightforward. It just gives it a nice finished look. And uh, yeah, I just have to do this for 100 guys. So yeah, yeah, no big deal. But with that said and done, we are now finished. Our amazing Death Guard Legion of Doom. Now let's have a look at all of the individual elements of the army. We got some bigger pieces like these bloat drones where you can really see the detail work on the outer shell, all the way down to hundreds of small grunts. For example, there are 60 cultists and 40 of these poxwalker zombies, as well as 15 of the elite infantry of these plague marines, which were actually a lot of fun to do up, and I even converted a few of some spare bits. On top of that, we also have a customized tank from some Academy kits and leftover Warhammer pieces, so I'd have some sort of an armored vehicle. And finally, we have the commanders. Now these guys, I probably spent an extra hour or two just working out some of the fine detail. You notice there's maybe a little bit more bronze or copper in them. Uh, there's some bone effects here and there in their horns. Uh, these were relatively straightforward with just some washes, different metallic colors, and a light dry brushing of different brown shades and white. But at the end of the day, I just wanted them to pop out a little bit more than the others, but they have 90% of the same palette as their brethren. Now let's have a look at the entire army.
Well, that has been today's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, maybe found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure you hit the like, share, subscribe down below, and please pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build this channel from the ground up. And is there anything that you want me to build, why don't you leave it in the comments down below? Maybe I'll be able to do an upcoming episode if Mia doesn't kill me first. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media. I hope you were thoroughly entertained, and we'll catch you on the next one. Now, just do what they tell you, all full of mind, free mind subdued. Now, just jump where they tell you, don't question this, so they'll come up and jail you. Now, just say what they want to, every night you sleep, the memories will haunt you. Now, just die like a pawn, so you won't have to live with the hate that you spawn. This is war, dirty as hell, more dirty are the people in the power they tell you. Do as you're told, don't question these orders, gone to his head, the power with no borders. This is war, dirty as hell, more dirty are the people in the power they tell you. Do as you're told, don't question these orders, gone to his head, the power with no borders.